Hi everyone, this is Dale Pinker with ForexStopHunters.com. want to welcome everyone hearing my voice watching this video for your efforts and persistence to become a more effective FX trader or any other asset class that you trade. It's my contention, a chart is a chart is a chart. The only difference is leverage and volatility levels. want to remind everybody that risk capital only should be used when trading these markets that means money that you can afford to lose and that past performance is not indicative of future results and of course what's in our name is what we talk about and I want to share with you a recent example of a stop hunt that I forecasted and this pair is the Aussie USD and I want to take you back to the first rally that we had off the low after the first big break from 102.70 in uh, Aussie at the highs all the way back here from this break. This is your daily chart. There's your four hour. And here's the example. So People turned pretty negative on Aussie after this initial break, which was about 450 pips from the recent high that I showed you to this low. And up in here, we were taking a shot at the short side. And as you can see, this high up here is par 1920. Came off a little bit. And the high there was par 16 and a half. So, of course, bears that we're looking for new lows and a continuation of the break when they started getting short depending upon what their trigger was stochastic MACD moving averages whatever the trigger was they started to get sell signals so what we're going to diagnose here is where are the buy stops we know what they were looking for when they started getting short they were looking for new lows and stops under uh, this level which I think we may get to in the next several days but I want to give you an example of a stop hunt so as the market began to decline more and more buy stops began to accumulate over these highs because the bears were looking for much lower levels and these lows to be taken out and actually the move was reinforced when we had a couple of little failing rallies here and had a very directional break here so unless people were trailing their stops, more and more stops as time moved on and price moved to confirm their bias, more buy stops accumulated over this little double top, which would have been more bearish if we had taken out this high. But the fact that it didn't tells me that there was still some unfinished business. So this is a stop hunt that was forecasted and the way to have exploited it was your belief that there were buy stops here there were several opportunities to put long positions on started doing it here once called out the stop hunt in here because what I was seeing was this market was correcting more in time than in price here it corrected more in price here it worked the overbought condition off by marking time and moving sideways so as I'm looking at this chart I go you know what bears are feeling a lot more nervous now in here and people that said wow you know I missed this decline this is another great shorting opportunity and what what where am I wrong where would I put my stop so again stops over 102.20 so to exploit it you get long looking for the market to elect the buy stops over uh, par 19 and after that event most likely you're going to the door now there was some decent follow-through we had another 30 pips to the upside for oh maybe another seven eight hours but what made it valid as a stop hunt and a reversal was the next time it was trading under these levels so after the stop hunt was elected, what we do is we sell into the flurry of buy stops over these highs. And then we wait 
to see if it was just a spike, just a fake out, and your indicator that it was a stop hunt is when we're back under these levels. So for a while, people said, boy, I'm glad I'm out of my short because, you know, rallied another 50 pips, but several hours later, it's back under their sell stop. So there's two ways to approach a stop hunt. You position yourself into the event, which you could have done here with reasonable stops, looking for 10020 buy stops to be elected and then sell into them in case it's just a spike. So we didn't catch the whole move up to 70, but we were there for the stop hunt. Now the second part of a stop hunt is was it just a stop hunt or a breakout? And the way you can tell your best stop hunts is when there's minimal follow through and within that one candle of taking out these stops, we're back underneath where the people that took hits had their stops. This one had some follow through. So here's a recent example of last week of a stop hunt. What you're doing is you're looking to be long into the event. Once the event happens, your reason for being in the trade has uh, been fulfilled, manifested, so you book it, you take profits, and then you wait and see if we start to trade back under these levels, even though there was 50 pips worth of follow through, it sure didn't last long. So this breakout actually turned out to be a fake out. So you had a sell signal back under the previous highs. So here's a recent example in Aussie USD of a stop hunt. And I'm going to give you another one. Now let's look at an example of a stop hunt to the downside. This pair is USD CAD. So for a while, a lot of people have uh, been looking to bottom pick this pair. So there have been uh, several false starts and bear market rally throughout the course of finally reaching this low. So uh, under these lows, we had a very nice rally. So people that were getting long in here felt that they may have, have bottom picked the USD CAD, but then once it started to violate it, what is the question we ask ourselves? Where are the stops? Obviously, throughout this rally phase, anyone who started to get buy signals in USD CAD, they're going to say, well, where am I wrong? Well, I'm wrong if it makes new lows. So here you have the lows in USD CAD of 98.47 so this was the low so as we're starting to approach the low how do we exploit the event if we believe that they're not going to let the people who bought it here even though we had an advance be able to stay long when the true advance happens and you are looking for these stops to be elected before you have a more significant turn Part of that happens with momentum divergence that we'll discuss in a later video. So in here you're going, you know what? They're going to take the stops out. So you can position yourself by looking for reasons to be short, knowing that there are buy stops under the low of the move. Once the sell stops are elected under this level, and we're talking about 98.47, here we are. Tried to hold it here for just a bit. 98.49 and a half was a low. And on the next hourly bar, sell stops were elected. Anyone who was long was shaken out of the position. If you wanted to exploit it by being short into the event, you're covering as soon as this price level is triggered because you know that there is a lot of new selling coming in, liquidation through the stops. That's a great time when there's a lot of selling for you to book profits when you're short because you're buying into pressure and you get good fills. Now what's interesting about this event is after people were stopped out and say for example you were short into this and you took profits depending upon where you began your stop hunt, you're looking at this an hour later 
on this candle and we're currently at the high we're trading 98.75 so what happened everyone got stopped out under the 47 level and one hour after they're stopped out it's 30 40 pips above their stop they're going well, okay you know new lows I should be out of the way this is a classic stop hunt where all it is is about shaking out weak land weak hands with no follow through because once the stell stops were hit there was no fresh selling to come in it was basically long liquidation with no follow through and you can view the stop hunt again first by being short to exploit it into the event and cover your shorts and then watching the action that has started trading above these previous lows even at the close of this bar so no follow through into new lows that's your first sign that it may have been a, just a shakeout move to take out the weak longs before the market did stage a very dramatic advance so again two aspects to the stop hunt to exploit the event diagnosing which is your first step where the stops sell stops here buy stops here once it looked like these lows were going to be threatened you can take a short position into the event cover your shorts into the event and look for potential reversals your first sign of a reversal is when the market's trading above wherever the stops were so here's a couple of ways that you can add to your trading plan a skill of diagnosing where the stops are going on the hunt by being positioned into the event and then after the event and you've covered in flat I'm not recommending reversing right away if the market begins to trade above these stop levels then you know that weak longs are out there was no follow-through selling it was just liquidation sell stops being elected and then you can probe the market for a reversal in the next direction in the reverse direction I wanted to give you a few examples of stop hunts that took took place last week. I hope that this embellishes what you're looking at so that instead of being the prey or the victim, you become the hunter. So you're looking to exploit these events where obvious stops are placed rather than placing your stops with everybody else. This is Dale Pinkert with ForexStopHunters.com signing out.